it's very musical the dialect from Campania and right. which is where, where Napoli and Naples are so a lot of Italian immigrants including my grandparents came from Campania near my grandparents are from Gaeta which is between Naples and Rome mm -hmm. and uh, Anna Maria is from a town called Sapri um, on the um, southern part of, of Campania and um, so yeah but so a lot so that's why when we when we imitate Italians in English, we, we tend to use the, you know, the Neapolitan dialect like a Sophia Lord. And then, you know, because it's, it's, it's just a very musical dialect. And my grandmother, who's um, died at 101, she, I'm named after her. She's Cristina Dovidio. But um, I remember as a kid, even though we didn't learn Italian as children, but she would always be like, hey, Guaglione, chi sta qua? Cristina, vieni qua. La, la, you know, like, those are the, that's the music that later led me to want to study Italian because I fell in love yeah. with the music of it. I wanted to thank Cristina and Anna Maria for being with us. You know, we're doing these Zoom uh, meetings to stay connected with our clients and also just get that travel fix that those of us that love to travel really are craving right now. And I am excited to sort of hear, just hearing you two talk <laughs> makes me excited because just hearing the language and um, is just really fun. Uh, so we can start uh, learning some Italian. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you officially to Rochelle and Julie. Uh, we've been, um, friends and um, I guess small business, uh, part of the small business community for a very long time and have, uh, I know I've been to, to Peace Frogs to do some events and we've, and you've been to speak for some Women Travel Alliance events and it's just a great collaboration. So, and I know we, you know, just my heart goes out to anyone in, in any business, but especially, you know, travel and it's been a really challenging time. So, um, I don't know, it just, it, it's just great to remember, support local, <laughs> go yeah. global. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then personally, like they've helped me plan so many trips that have been really important to my family and also to speak some of our um, trips to Italy and, and helping our clients to, to get there to attend our, our trips. Um, so, so it's just great to, to be here. And um, yeah, so we want, uh, Anna Maria and I want tonight to be very interactive so you can feel free to um, not unmute, you know, keep yourself, your micro, your audio on and uh, interrupt us at any time with a question. <laughs> um, so uh, Anna Maria is, um, is here with me, Anna Maria Bacalian, and she's um, probably our, our lead Italian teacher right now and has been with us for how long, Anna Maria? Like, so uh, we speak. Uh, yeah, two thousand and eleven. Yeah, so that's, that. that's a long time. Yeah, so um, yeah, and so we've worked together and really had a lot of fun. And she also, in addition to teaching Italian and being Italian, uh, leads beautiful trips to Italy. And oh. so, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't, so one of them, the last one, had to be um, postponed. But you've done a couple trips, um, right? Yes, yes, all of them. Yeah, it's yeah, all, all of them. Yeah. All of them. Um, so we, hope, yes. we hope to bring those, bring those back. And it's been beautiful to have some of our speak Italian students going on her trips. And it's just a, a wonderful synergy, just like we have with Peace Frog. So it's just, it's great, great to support each other. So yeah. tonight, um, as promised, we thought we'd uh, teach a little Italian and talk a little bit, uh, have a kind of a conversation about some of our favorite. Our, two of our favorite regions in Italy, and then hopefully um, answer questions or uh, off of that. So, va bene? <laughs> va bene? Okay. Allora, um, share my screen. I have a little PowerPoint um, here. And oops, it went way ahead. No, I don't want to go back. Oh, you're getting to see everything because I had it at the wrong spot. Oh, no. Wait. Um, wait a second. I still <laughs> made it look so easy. You popped it right up there. I know. Gosh. Um, I think I have to share it again. Share screen. Here we go. Here we go. All right. And now you the slideshow. Yeah, see, um, there we go. 
All right, so Keiko's a speech speak language center. Most of you are familiar with us, but if, in case anyone isn't, um, we are a 16 year old language center. So I started it uh, myself uh, in 2004 in the main street market uh, above a coffee, uh, Italian coffee and gelato bar. I had uh, mm -hmm. five students and uh, that I taught myself and I taught children, adults, and I eventually started bringing people to Italy. Uh, and, but, you know, as you can tell, I'm a pretty um, social person. So <laughs> I love community. And I was just like, oh, it's getting a little, um, a little lonely just being me. So I brought in another Italian teacher. Then people were like, we want Spanish, we want French. Uh, and we've really grown with the Charlottesville community uh, over the years. And um, so now we recently moved to this space here, uh, which is in the main, is in uh, the McIntyre Plaza. So we're way in the back in the new section. The and, uh, so we, um, we're here right now in our space oh. and where we're, we're not really having many lessons, although Anna Maria just had um, a couple here learning Italian. So we're doing in-person on request, but we're teaching uh, mainly online um, right now, adults and children, professionals, travelers. So this picture shows many of our teachers, maybe 20 or 25 of our 60 teachers uh, who teach the 22 languages that we, that we teach. Um, and um, so that's a little bit uh, about our language center. And speed travelers Italian, just to warm up, we thought we would do a little Italian uh, for travel. Some of the most uh, important phrases that it, and words that if you travel to Italy, these are pretty much going to be, I don't know, 80% of uh, your interactions um, on a daily basis or hourly basis if you're going touring around uh, Roma, Firenze, Venezia, right? So um, the first greeting, and then Anna Maria and I will alternate, <laughs> uh, oh. is, um, and you can repeat after me, in, in, during the day you would say, buongiorno. 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 Bene. <laughs> and then in the evening, which is usually after the lunch break, which varies depending if you're in southern Italy it might be late in the afternoon four or five um, northern Italy might end at, at, at Buonasera. 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 So um, and then you can add signore or signora so the first one is for um, so let's try. Buongiorno, signore. Buongiorno, Buongiorno signore. Molto bene, bravissimi. Buonasera, signora. Buonasera, signora. Molto bene. And I heard a lot of great Italian R's. I didn't hear Sarah. I heard Sera, which is beautiful. Uh, molto bene. So tonight we could say, so what would you say to me tonight? If you were just saying hello for the first time. Buonasera, Buonasera, Buonasera signora. Buonasera, signora. Brava. I think that would apply to all, all the women here. And so, uh, yeah, and then the more informal ciao, uh, which is, uh, as you know, hello and ciao. Just good, goodbye. Ciao. 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 <laughs> yeah, and you can really hear all the vowels in this Italian, as we were saying with Campania, it's a very musical language and um, a very phonetic language. So um, you have three vowels in there and uh, you can actually hear them if you go in slow motion. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> so that's beautiful. Ciao is very informal. So you wouldn't ever use that with um, strangers. So you could use it with a child that you didn't know. Sure. They say ciao. Buonasera. And, and we wave like this usually in backwards in Italian. Buonasera. Really? This means come here. Vieni, vienica, right? <laughs> and this, this is a ciao. So it's kind of a backwards, like, like I'm doing this, but I'm doing it like this. Ciao. ciao. Oh. Hi. That's, that's the gesture for that. We can have a whole nother um, 30 minute thing on gestures next time. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds we fun. Don't, we don't need any audio and I'll be like, <laughs> la politica. No. Um, 
talk we don't want to talk about politics tonight but um yeah. and, <laughs> and salve you can repeat that salve Salve. That's a great kind of generic neutral greet, neutral greeting. It comes from the Latin, it just means um, greetings, really. So you can always say that. Salve, signora. It doesn't usually mean goodbye. It's just a greeting when you walk into a store. It'd be salve, and it's it's still polite, um, but very simple. Salve, two sy syllables. Molto bene. Anna Maria, take it away. Ah, grazie. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Prego. 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 So thank you. You're welcome. Hmm? What else, how else do you use prego? Oh, prego. Prego as you you welcome or prego. Prego. And you, cannot, you don't understand the uh, pardon. I beg your pardon. So that is uh, prego. Can you repeat it or prego? So it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's a great one. Prego is just, I put four <laughs> syllables because a lot of Americans say grazie. I don't know why, oh. but probably because they haven't studied Italian. And, um, but you always want to have the four syllables, grazie, and then you'll sound very Italian. Um, and then, yeah, but prego is just great. So if you're, if you're just someone, a waiter just is like, you know, le mezzi mani, it's like, prego. <laughs> so please, please repeat. Uh, and then mm. if you want to open the door for someone and you know you can just say prego please after you and then also if you um often if you're at a coffee bar and you know it's your, it's your turn <coughs> they'll say Pre prego you know like you're your next stop please please order mm. so that's just like I, I always call that the million euro word because it's just like if you're gonna know one word prego is probably one a good one to know um, Anna Maria, why don't you go over these? Two? Yes, sure. So, scusi or mi scusi. Mi scusi. Mi scusi. Right? That means, uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, permesso. Permesso. Can I, how would you translate that in English? I don't have permesso. Um, yeah, like um, it's it, it's excuse me, but permesso is when like you're trying to get on the bus and someone's right. on your way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you physically want to get around, you know, like literally if I can, if someone comes to my door and knocks, they'd be like permesso. I, so it's more of a physical asking for physical permission to to move in, in a direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And poi abbiamo mi dispiace. Oh, mi dispiace. Mi dispiace. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Mi dispiace. Mi dispiace. So if you like, if the person doesn't move and on the bus and you have to elbow them and you and they're like, oh, you'd be like, mi dispiace. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> scusi, yeah, and scusi is formal Italian. So um, mi scusi, that's just a really good one to use. And just anytime you want to call the waiter, you know, you'd be like, get their attention. I need more wine. Scusi, mi scusi. Anytime you want to get anyone's attention. And then permesso, physically, you need to get by someone. And then mi dispiace when you bump into them. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, please. Anyone know these? Per piacere, per favore. What, is, what does that mean? In English. Please. Please. Me too. please. So let's please. repeat. Let's repeat. Per piacere. Per piacere. Per favore. Per favore. Great. So those are both. Um, or your pleasure, let it be your pleasure, let it be your favor. Um, that's what they mean. But these are just great to add. And you don't always have to have a really fancy whole sentence with lots of with verbs and articles. You can just add per favore after what you're ordering, like due cappuccini per favore, right? You don't have to say like, may I have two cappuccini? Mm -hmm. no, so this is really simple. Um, but this is what Italians would say, un espresso per favore. They're not going to say, Posso avere un espresso, mi fa? Or, you know, just keeping it simple. That's what we like to do when we teach travelers, right, Ana Maria? Um, and then, Ana Maria? Ah, uh, sì. Si. Uh, Dov'è? 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 Dov'
per piacere, please, right? Where is something? Dov'è il Duomo? Ah, dov'è San Pietro? Where is uh, San Peter? Or where is the Dome? Please, obviously. Or the other one is uh, quant'è? How much it is? Um, okay. Quant'è? Quant'è? Per piacere. Yes. So it's how much does it cost? Per piacere. Quant'è la borsa? È la borsa Prada. La borsa Prada. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people like to say quanto costa, and that works too, but I think more Italians tend to just say quante a okay. little more. How much is quante. it? It's just a little more elegant um, and nice. Molto bene. And then if you're having a glass of wine, we can say this. Salute. 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 And that's a good word to remember now when we're all staying home because it means health. Mm -hmm. It means your it means literally health to your health. Mm -hmm. Salute. So we want to toast to your health, um, especially this year, right? Yeah. And I'm writing that one down. Oh yeah, and the other one we say a lot, and I wrote it phonetically in Italian, is chin chin, <laughs> chin, -chin. chin, -chin and that's a very common um, one as well. Yeah. Um, oh, I just have a pronunciation challenge to warm warm you up more. We'll <laughs> for fun, and don't be embarrassed because these are really hard. But we'll start at the left and go down. Who wants to try the first word? With the P. Puglia. Puglia. Molto bene. Puglia. I, I love Puglia. that. GL Puglia. like tagliatelle. Next. Sar Sardegna. 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 And then. Ischia. Ischia. E, it's a hard seek. Ischia. Ischia. Molto bene. Ischia. Ischia is an island near Capri in Campania. Uh, and then this one. Chinese, molto bene. You've got the name. This one? Ah, chocolate. 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 Oh, this is the hardest word for Italian to pronounce. Yeah, yeah. I mean, American. Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, how do you pronounce Chacciarare. How do you think of the Italian most famous wine, mm -hmm. Chianti, C-H-I, right? Yeah. So now, yeah. now pronounce this one. Chiacchierare. Chiacchierare. So this Chiacchierare. Molto bene. So the C-H-I, if it's Chianti, if it's, it's chi in Chianti, it's going to be chi every time. So that's the beauty of Italian, it's always going to have the same sound. Mm. And G, if I tell you that G follows the same rule, what are you going to do for the next word? Girlandia. Yeah, Gear, Girlandaio. Girlandaio. An Italian artist. Molto bene. And then think of gelato. Uh, Gente. That. And then, molto bene. Gente. The same G E of gelato is with gente. Go back up to the food because we're getting hungry here. How do you pronounce this one? Gnocchi. 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 Molto bene. It's the GN Gnocchi. is like canyon, like the NY in canyon. <laughs> and then this one? Venezia. Molto mm. bene. Uh, Venezia. So the E Venezia. is pronounced always like the same way. Venezia. A lot of people, Vene say, a lot of people say like Venezia. Venezia. Mm. And I'm like, no, that's mm. not second. This isn't an I, it's an E. So Venezia. Yeah. And then same. Then we have the gelato again. Genova. 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 The city. Um. Um. Famous for pesto, focaccia, and salami. So, uh, and Christopher Columbus. And then this mm. the other island. Sicilia. 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 Because uh, yeah. we know cappuccino, right? And we had cioccolato. Cappuccino is with a CI and it's chino. So in Chinese, it's the same. Sicilia. Um, and then lentils. Here's a popular New Year's. Look at this. Yeah. Oh. What is it? Lenti 
Chi è? Lenti. Lenti chi è? Lenti, Lenti. chi è? Because <laughs> we have the CHI yeah. again. We have the CHI again. Chi è? And with an E, so we want to pronounce every vowel, right? Chi è? Lenticchie. Lentils. Popular on New Year's Eve um, dish in Italy. Um, or New Year's Day. And then um, this art. Yeah. Chiara scuro. Molto bene. Yeah. Yeah. This is a sign for perfect. Molto yeah. bene. Chiara <laughs> scuro <laughs> means light and dark. And it, that's an art term um, that when something is yeah. bright, bright and dark. Um, yeah. kind of like Caravaggio. Caravaggio, my favorite um, for art. For <laughs> I love, adoro Caravaggio. Okay, molto bene. Now we're going to talk travel a little bit. So here we have um, Italy's uh, 20, 20 regioni. So all the, uh, a lot of people think of going to Venice, Milan, Pisa, Florence. Florence. So we always at, at speak like to focus on regional travel and, and, and really teaching the different regions of traveling regionally. So um, the 20 different regions and um, we're going to, uh, I've been to most of them except for um, Valle d'Aosta. I think that's the only one I have, and Basilicata, which I haven't been to. Um, but yeah, so we're going to talk about these. And I think most of you have been to Italy, right? Yes. Yes, molto bene. So, Anna Maria, qual è la tua regione preferita? Ooh. What is your favorite region? Okay, yeah. Anna Maria. Oh, yes, uh, I like my uh, regione preferita, my uh, region, that the region that I prefer is uh, Basilicata, which is right there on the, there you go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's Basilicata. down south, right, it's between Puglia, Campania, and Calabria, right there, Basilicata. right here, here it it's is, right there. yeah, so right between the toe and the heel, the toe and the heel, <laughs> yes, uh, and uh, um, it's a this is where you're from, right? Sapri. Yes, That's where so she's Sapri from. is the train station we go when we attend <laughs> the train. <laughs> we are, uh, my, uh, the headquarters are 20 minutes uh, from Sapri. Um, so uh, we are in the uh, Cilento, Park of Cilento. It's a famous uh, um, park. Uh, but the region I like most is uh, Basilicata. Because it's a uh, um, it's a very green and lush and clean uh, region um, with small little villages that um, they have so much history. Um, it's very uh, Roman uh, Gothic kind of uh, history, and uh, um, it's just beautiful. And there are very uh, small details that they are or paintings that they are not as famous as, you know, Venice, Rome, uh, Florence, which nothing to, to take away from them because you want to visit those cities, but they are just as beautiful. Um, and then there is the important Via Appia, the Appiuth, uh, and that was uh, a very uh, rich region at one point because from Greece, they were going to the, uh, um, during the Roman Empire, uh, they were, uh, uh, there were lots of trades, transport goods. And so that was, a, it, it's still actually a good way to travel. <laughs> um, but, um, but it's really nice. And uh, the people are kind. Um, and I, I can't tell you enough. It's really, <laughs> it's really a nice uh, place. I, yeah, I, I can't wait to go and um, not as touristy as some regions. And uh, qual è la tua cittadina preferita in Basilicata? So I have a, yes, uh, so I have, my dream is to retire in Maratea. With <laughs> Maratea. So uh, it is on the uh, Tyrrhenian Sea and is uh -huh. as the pearl of the Tyrrhenian Sea. It Sea's is here. Right there, right? Yeah. Uh, so it is uh, on the water. I was born and raised on the water. And so for me, being closer to the water, it's, I don't know, it's important. And yeah. then this beautiful, this is a beautiful view from top. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. On a major train um, line. So in an hour and a half or two, you can go to Naples if you want to visit some sh shows, exhibitions, museums, and then, you know, you can go back to your quiet, nice life. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, there is a port. Um, so uh, and so my in my dream, I own also a little boat so that I can go. <laughs> which one? Well, which one? Qual? Qual? <laughs> oh yeah, right. No, it's uh, like uh, the one with the mask there. Yeah, this is your house uh, right here. Yeah. <laughs> this is your boat. Your so, boat. <laughs> so that I can go and uh, discover coves that they are nice and the water is so green blue uh it's really nice and uh, and then from there actually again during the summertime uh they have uh, um uh, like uh, ferries that they connect capris or sometimes they have also ferries that goes to the aeolian uh, islands which are mm. in Italy. Italy. Um, and so you can actually travel by sea instead of uh, cars or train or something else. Mm -hmm. So that is my dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And so you, Christina? What is your name? Wait, aspetta, aspetta. Oh, oh ah, sì, si, c'è anche Matera. Sì, si, è vero. How can I forget? Uh, yeah. So, Another city in, in, in Basilicata. That's si. beautiful. Mm. So this is uh, uh, Matera is uh, the uh, uh, this lovely uh, little town that you can see and um, visit. Um, last year was the uh, European capital of culture, so they had a uh, lots of uh, tourists. So there was a uh, lots of uh, going on. They have a beautiful festival uh, that is on the second uh, of July, but they start two weeks ahead to put the lights on, to get organized um, uh, for the uh, uh, festival because it's the uh, patron, the saint patron of the city. And they uh, start early with uh, sunrise and they go all the way down to sunset. So, and it, during the day there are rituals and people gather around, it's just beautiful. Um, looking from this, the city looks like a, it's a, or city, you know, like a, but it's uh, deceiving. Uh, the city actually has some really nice stores. People are very, I mean, I, it was a pleasant surprise because my expectations were low. And then when I went there, it was like, wow. <laughs> so it was really, really nice. Um, and it's famous for the caves, right? Did you go to some of the caves? Because it's built on, is that Tufa stone or? Right, it is built rock. Really rock. Yes, and there is this one uh, uh, cave that is, uh, again, uh, Roman, um, uh, yes, and is uh, called the uh, uh, Sistine Chapel of the South because uh -huh. it's go in the cave and then you see this painting that was um, uh, made by a, a brother, you know, a, a monk. monk, yes. Uh, and uh, and it's so beautiful. It really is nice. Um, it's just the 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 pathos. Once you are there, it is so close. It is so intimate. And I don't know. I I I was like blown away. It was <laughs> so. And it's I, the colors are so vivid, and, and it's just. Beautiful. Just stunning, just stunning. Yeah, I've, I've, I was gonna go there one year when I was in Calabria, and um, I wasn't able to. But I, I googled, you know, I searched for some amazing um, hotels that I saw that were so chic and built inside the caves with cool lighting and all designer stuff. So, so um, that's what she was saying by its being very um, artistic and chic and design focused which you know like as you said is not evident from uh it looks just like a pile of rocks or something like but yeah. yeah so it's just a, one of those places where you want to get lost and go down these stairs and see what you find and um so that seems like the beauty of, of busy the yeah. a lot of places in italy so um brava hey you yeah. hey, too. <laughs> ah, see? <laughs> what's my favorite region well i can't really it's hard to pick, but um, I picked Umbria for mine. So Umbria, um, 
is um, in called the green, the green Heart of Italy, and uh, as you can see, it's right in in the heart of Italy. It's literally very green. I think it's like eighty percent hills and mountains. So if you like hill towns, and um, Tuscany is um, is over is booked <laughs> or you just want to try something different i always recommend umbria uh, the one thing it doesn't have is a coast so of course tuscany has mm. beautiful beaches and the islands like alba and capraia but umbria would not have the beach um, but it has hill towns galore history galore and i've um, for five years i led um, trips here to todi which is down here my favorite um, my favorite town and um, it was called Two Weeks in Todi, and I, I really enjoyed bringing groups of uh, Italian lovers to study and live in a hill town for two weeks and learn Italian. And so that's how I got to know and travel around to some of the beautiful towns here, which I have a couple more pictures of, but some of my favorites, Orvieto, Perugia, which is like the Charlottesville, the university town, the Charlottesville of, um, of, of Umbria, uh, also has a lot, an, a lot of international uh, St. Francis's Assisi, Gubbio up here, which is um, also features in St. Francis's stories and um, is a uh, very cold and um, kind of um, a stark, stark scenery. Spello, where Michelle Damiani is living now, beautiful, another beautiful um, medieval town. Um, uh, Bevania, Montefalco, so famous for the, 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 the history, the um, beautiful wines, beautiful festivals uh, and all of that. This is a town in, in the um, southeastern corner of uh, the region that I really highly recommend. It, it's a, quite a drive from um, places like Todi and Orvieto, maybe an hour, or two hours. Um, but in the spring, you can see it fills, the fields are filled with the wildflowers. And then there's this beautiful little hill town that just famous for its cheeses and salumi. And um, you can hike, you can, we rode horses in this field and it's just the mountains all around. It's just stunning. You're like, is this true for real? It's just so beautiful. So that's one of my favorite places in, in Umbria to go. I also love Orvieto, um, which is yes. an the Etruscan town built on um, volcanic rock, the Tufa Stone, uh, famous for its white wines. You can see all the wine vi vineyards around. So that would be a beautiful place to stay at a small agriturismo or a country um, hotel um, out there. And it's famous for this monster of a cathedral, which I always love um, seeing in Florence, the Duomo, when you pull in on the train and you see this enormous uh, dome of, of, the, of the main, Duomo of, of Florence and it's the same sensation here when you're driving and you see this massive massive uh, gothic cathedral with some beautiful renaissance um, chapels in there by um, Luca Signorelli is a beautiful beautiful painter so um, a great um, even day trip from Todi Perugia anywhere just go there for a couple days or a week <laughs> you'll love it the towns like it's also famous for its festivals when I would go with groups in the summer we would always have like four or five festivals to pick from in June or September whatever whenever time of year there seems to be a festival. Bivania has one that's called the Festa delle Gaite which is um, ancient um, trades so you could go and they would be dyeing um, dyeing wool in the ancient you know in the uh, historic way with natural dyes or you know you'd see them making paper and then they'd have archery contests and all the local citizens are just so proud which is a feature you'll see anywhere in Italy whenever there's a festival and um, you see all the children dressed in the in the medieval garb and you know the dancing and every night of course the the taverns will open up into the street so you can just sit outside and drink your wino these terracotta um, cups that they made you know right there and um, all the food coming and wine just from the region so those are some of the best wonderful evenings that you can have in Umbria and here's Todi and here I am in the middle with some people that I've traveled with on my trip and Todi is just just a beautiful hill town um, that where I picked to to base my trips out of so that's probably my favorite if I if I could be like Ana Maria and, and buy a place <laughs> I would probably buy one in Todi oops this one is and then we'll talk about food Ana Maria qual è il tuo piatto preferito your oh, yeah. favorite dish <laughs> 
<laughs> there are many, but the one that I, my number one is spaghetti alle vongole, and uh, those are uh, um, uh, clams. But in Italy, the clams are smaller. And they so, are. I don't, they, it seems like there is a lot more. <laughs> in <this Yeah>. <laughs> You're probably so disappointed if you ever ordered it in the States. <laughs> <laughs> Because they only put six or seven, but because they're small, so there are maybe 12. So two for each big ones that they have here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I know I grew up in New England, so we just have these giant steamers. They don't go on the spaghetti like this. <laughs> right. No. Yeah, so, yeah. so that is my, definitely, that is my number one favorite. Yes. yes. And two, Christina, and yours? Uh, I, yeah, I... I have so many favorites, but I happen to have a picture of one of my favorite <laughs> places in Todi. So this is the hill town in Umbria that I that I yeah. um, that I love so much. So this is a I had a picture from my favorite restaurant there that's called Enoteca Oberdan, which is um, you can see it's featured here, and then the view is all of the the hills and valley of of Todi. So it's just exceptional. Um, so you could eat inside or inside the little, um, it's just um, maybe five, 600 square feet inside there and there are like five little tables and just Elsa, the owner and Graziella, the, um, the cook slash chef. And you can see her through the window cooking um, and, you know, say hi to her. And it's just so friendly and delicious. So these are mezze maniche, which are kind of similar to the pasta necklace I made, <laughs> but a little bigger. So it means manica is like your sleeve. So they're half sleeves half sleeves like mine, <laughs> short sleeves mm -hmm. with um, salsicha, sausage, verza, which is a local cabbage, mm -hmm. and salvia, sage. So that's just so delicious, made perfectly al dente. You can see the drizzle of olive oil. So um, with the glass of um, probably local wine, I can't read what that was, and, and some you know sparkling water, and um, just a perfect, perfect um, meal. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. <laughs> so I think that's all for the presentazione. Um, and we're gonna, um, if you have any questions or comments uh, now, we're gonna stop sharing. January 1st is the important meal because we are having lentil, which means money, uh, with a pork sausage, which is a good luck, and mashed potatoes, uh, which I don't know what it means, but I guess it's good together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we're going to play uh, uh, tombola uh, because we do a uh, lot of uh, uh, games or uh, board games and tombola is the, uh, the uh, game of the season and it's similar to bingo right Christina how would you yeah know? bingo yeah but you um, use money, you use money on that. Right, square. so you use, you buy your little card and that generates money. And then if you have two numbers in the row, they're called ambos. So you take the first, you know, like a five cents. And if you have three is 15 cents. If you have four, 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 then five <laughs> numbers. And then when you have the entire card covered with beans, because that is, then it's tombola, then you take the loot basically. <laughs> Well, when, when we reopen at Speak, we'll have to have a tombola night. Yeah, yeah. So, and so it's nice for the children because they get money and so you get numbers and whatnot. So, um, so that is what we, what we do. And then uh, I'm looking forward from Spaghetti alle vongole. That is my number one. You can't wait. You can't wait. And you can I can't to, wait. You can go to Maratea and get um, a good deal yeah. on uh, a villa there on the water. Yes, I, right. Um, very good time to buy property in Italy. Yes, yes, right. <laughs> so now it should be a good time. But, um, but that is uh, what, we are, what, what we do for our holidays. And then there are local foods, sweets, obviously, uh, like the struffoli, which you find here, I think, sometimes. Um, I don't know, Wegman sometimes sells them, I think. Um, but um, uh, all these kind of things and, you know, Hopefully to have a distance uh, meeting with friends and catch up with them and you know go for a cup of coffee for a cafe al bar with yeah. something else that it's uh, something I I'm looking forward even if I by, my, by myself. 
<laughs> yeah, I know, just to be there. And um, it's a little, war it's mild in Campania. So you you should be able to be outside even in right. January. Yeah. So, so okay. yes. So that is my, uh, looking forward to that. And yeah. I hope and I, I can come back. Yeah, I hope, yeah, you better come back. <laughs> yeah. Does your, um, does your town have a wide range of ages? Like, is it a town that attracts young people to stay and continue to, I mean, I know that's an issue with some a mm -hmm. small Italian towns, especially in the South. Right, no, um, we, where we are, so there is a, it's a all um, from young up to uh, old people. So yeah, um, so it, it's a very nice and lucky and actually, um, there are also lots of um, uh, uh, people that they went to Germany or Belgium, you know, that migrate to, uh, and they are coming back. They're building the house or uh, they're just buying a house or piece of property. And so, or they come for vacation. Uh, and so that is, um, so in the summertime, it's very busy, very, very busy. So it's a really nice, actually, because it's up on the hill, 20 minutes, you can be near the beach and so it's yeah it's it's maybe, a really nice area maybe you won't come back no <laughs> yeah, maybe you won't come back no. <laughs> your zoom there you just have to take her class at some very weird time like you gotta get yeah. up you know <laughs> at three, three in the morning exactly yeah <laughs> oh while uh, yes while i'm having a uh, aperitivo now it's so very in vogue uh, this aperitivi cenati so it's aperitivi with finger foods but I don't eat much for me that it's a meal already so I can't wait for a prosecco and you know this nice yeah like antipasti whatever yeah they offer <laughs> yeah a peri yeah like a pericena a pericena aperitivo cenado each, each town each region they call it that you know it's, yeah like in Florence it's popular <laughs> especially with students and because aperitivo with cena which is dinner they make it into one word apericena it's kind of like a happy hour so if you buy a drink then they'll yeah. have a huge spread of antipasti and it could be a, and it's included with your drink so that's a good good secret when you go, go to Italy to oh yes look for yeah. the bars that you see people sitting outside with a plate of lots of different yummies that's a pretty chain oh my gosh <laughs> we gotta yeah. have like a food party when we can all get together yeah yes. <laughs> fancy drinks and some really good Italian food yes yep. I'm, I'm in okay. <laughs> definitely yeah did anybody have any other questions Comments, trips planned. <laughs> dreaming, dreaming, dreaming. That's what oh we can gosh. do now. So you can dream and feed the culture, and you know that's that's what we try to do ourselves. And like yes. everybody is teaching a lot of students, and just like doing what we did, look at pictures and talk and learn Italian. <laughs> well, like I think people are definitely craving that. Um, and are are you guys still doing your? sort of boot camp classes which are more low-key for yeah like yeah Anna, Anna, yeah Anna Maria especially teaches those and we call them Buon Viaggio so Italian for mm. beginners and travelers so now it's great because it's really just like virtual travel <laughs> and you know yeah. but it is getting people ready for and those are usually like um, eight lessons of you know an hour and a half each or now online we try to do them an hour each or eight Eater okay, I'm gonna look it up. I feel like I need a travel fix, and I mean, yeah. even half of listening to you talk is very relaxing. It makes me <laughs> feel like I've been somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's been a bit real boom in the online learning, you know, during the pandemic for the same reason. But yeah, <laughs> you know, Christina, one thing that I just thought of, and this is kind of a work thing, but I have some clients who are going to Italy next year. I was just working on their trip. Um, <laughs> and um they might not want to do a class because they've been there before but like a refresher so you could do like a two hour kind of like a beginner reboot right just to yeah, learn yeah. on a one-on-one -on -one basis yeah we usually don't do um 10 hour, <laughs> 10 hour minimum but we could do okay. five hour five hours because we okay. find like two hours with it by the time they get into it it's over yeah right. so it's just um but we could do five hour that's good to know because we're just adding we're just kind of responding to what people want so it's mm -hmm. like oh, you want two people or you want you know so yeah, yeah. 
a, a refresher or um, yeah, and then we can customize it based on where they're going. So like if they're going to Umbria, we look at menus from there. And so they'll be familiar with the actual foods that they'll be ordering, <laughs> stuff like that. So oh, that's great. Okay. Customize it. Yeah. So Grazie mille. <laughs> um, I want to say buon, buenos de, buenos era. Yeah. Uh, Signoras. Oh, uh, molto bene, signor. <laughs> Brava. I learn something. Yay. So I easy. So easy. Molto facile. Italian is probably <laughs> probably one of the easiest languages and it's really fun <laughs> to, to, to speak and teach. So thanks for giving us the chance to do a little teaching. Yes. Thank you. Thank you guys, you. it was really fun. Thanks everybody for coming. Thank you. Awesome. Prego. Prego. Arrivederci. Great. Arrivederci. Ciao. I got it. Ciao. Bravo. <laughs>